so far we have discussed about the definition of shock the stages of shock the classification classification of hemorrhagic shock and the initial stage of shock various mechanisms involved in the compensated shock and various mechanisms involved in the progressive stage of shock and the various aspects concerning with them in this class i will cover irreversible or irreversible shock or refractory shock recalling the definition of shock once again it is a generalized tissue hypoperfusion leading to failure of vital organs like heart lung kidney liver brain ultimately leading to death the stages of shock for as i recap the characteristics of the circulatory shock change with the severity the shock, shock is divided into the following stages the initial stage which is the beginning this initial stage depending upon the severity leads to non progressive or compensated stage in which the normal circulatory compensatory mechanisms are activated and they try to compensate and restore the blood circulation or hemodynamics of the blood circulation and recover the patient without any treatment you can recall when you have given a or when you have taken a blood in the blood bank from a donor you have taken nearly about 400 ml of blood but he walks away after giving it without any changes in the blood pressure this is belonging to the compensated stage then comes the progressive stage or decompensated stage in which the regular compensatory mechanisms fail to restore the the blood pressure or the perfusion or the hypoxemic status which lead to the worsening of the condition and progresses it to the next stage the next stage of the shock is an irreversible stage of the shock this is also called a refractory stage in this stage it has progressed or this stage has resulted from the progression or the severity in such an extent that all forms of compensatory mechanisms available have failed and whatever the treatments available right now are not enough to save or restore the circulatory abnormality set in the patient even though for certain time the person remains alive but ultimately he will die so this is that stage of the shock so that is very dangerous and you can recall in the history number of persons or number of soldiers who are losing a large amount of blood they go into this stage further going with the irreversible shock it is defined as a terminal or a last phase of the shock despite correcting all or treating the initial cause initial cause may be anything may be hemorrhage may be infection toxemia or may be diarrhea as in cholera which has produced the shock you have treated it but and also you have treated or restored the circulation still it continues to progress and uh, they which results in the fall of blood pressure that is decline in blood pressure and that results in a decreased tissue perfusion and ultimately the circulatory failure 
the circulatory failure leads to number of changes in various vital organs these organs include brain heart lung kidney liver and these vital organs once they fail they ultimately they do not function and death ensues even after heroic attempts by the doctors or the treating physicians to resuscitate the patient so this is that type of a shock in which we are as doctors are helpless and we have to do lot of research on this now let's see those six groups of dogs the gaitan has described in which he has bled these dogs to different levels of blood pressure or the fall in blood pressure i have already discussed about 1 2 3 stage that is a compensated stage and four and five stage is a progressive stage and six is a irreversible stage that is how they are blocked the blue shaded line indicates the irreversible stage you can see that in these dogs the blood pressure is decreasing progressively and ultimately somewhere around 180 minutes that is in in group 6 180 minutes that the, it has touched zero line that is the depth of the animal and in this animal the blood pressure the bleeding was taken place to make the blood pressure fall below 60% of the original level this figure is taken from gaitan further i have discussed about this graph the oxygen delivery and the oxygen consumption this is that stage you can see here in stage 1 the atp supply and atp demand are equal and redistribution of a blood flow is possible in stage 2 atp supply and atp demand are in balance and recruitment of additional capillaries or recruitment of additional mechanisms compensate for it in stage 3 slowly what is happening atp supply is lesser than the atp demand so that results in the anaerobic metabolism setting in and the setting in of the anaerobic metabolism so that uh, that makes the membranes to leak because there is a uh, failure of all the sodium potassium atp is pump because atp is required the sodium it gets in and the potassium gets out hydrogen ion accumulation takes place the membranes uh, deteriorate and the membranes depolarize because of the potassium and the depolarization of the membrane allows the calcium flux into the cell through the voltage gated calcium channels and this these voltage gated calcium channels results in what happens all the vesicular damage the vesicular membranes they they collapse because of the the calcium and that results in that results in the membrane rupture and ultimately cell death it's not only this simple this is more complex than what is been written here in these four or five lines so we look, we require we look into these we look into these and we try to understand the irreversible stage of the shock here is a picture in which the six dogs have been bled more than 75% the fall of the 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 cardiac output was decreased by more than 75% that enters into irreversible stage of shock and at around 60 minutes at around 60 minutes here here you can see the the transfusion has started they have given enough transfusion whatever the loss of blood they have produced and they try to bring back the blood pressure to the original level that is 100% 
but even after that you cannot keep on transfusing the blood forever but once you have restored the blood pressure to the initial level or the blood volume to the initial level so now what happens so the the it, the blood the blood pressure remains to an extent for some more time say for example from around uh, 80 minutes uh, up to uh, say for example 120 minutes it is uh, remaining uh, nearly with around 80% of the initial and then it it falls or it deteriorates and the ultimately even after transfusion this animal dies this is the condition this is the irreversible state here we have transfused the blood in these dogs and these dogs uh, the even the after the transfusion we were not able to revive them and this is what happens in case of human beings only we can when we transfuse or when we try to make the blood volume to the normal level we can only prolong the life for some more time now what happens in this you can see there is a inadequate perfusion this inadequate perfusion leads to cellular hypoxia this cellular hypoxia results in energy deficiency that is atp depletion so this further reduces the perfusion because of the blood circulation then it results in because of the energy deficiency anaerobic metabolism sets in the lactic acid production begins and the production of lactic acid decreases the ph produces what is called a metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis is a condition in which the acids or secreted because of the metabolism in contrast to the respiratory acidosis which can also happen the respiratory acidosis which is because of the suppose you hold your breath when you hold your breath carbon dioxide accumulates the accumulation of carbon dioxide results in excessive h ions that is respiratory acidosis now here lactic acid production this is a metabolism and that produces the fall in ph and this the fall in ph further results in anaerobic metabolism anaerobic metabolism you know we will have only 4 moles of atp generated for each mole of glucose hence there is a further energy deficiency this goes on this is one of those vicious cycle that continues further this metabolic acidosis decreases the vasoconstriction and pre capillary sphincters fail to respond and the pre capillary sphincters once they fail to respond there is a peripheral pooling of the blood and the peripheral pooling of the blood results in a decreased venous return decreased venous return increases the decreased diastolic filling end diastolic volume is decreased the stroke volume is decreased you can recall the starling's law states that the force of contraction of a cardiac muscle is dependent upon the initial length so once the end diastolic volume is decreased the stroke volume decreases the decrease in stroke volume decreases the cardiac output the normally the stroke volume is about 70 ml per stroke now it is less than that hence the cardiac output decreases the normal cardiac output is 5 liters per minute just to remind you now it decreases very greatly maybe it becomes 2 liters or so something like that i am making it about 60% reduction and this results in uh, fall in blood pressure that is making the inadequate perfusion that continues that continues with the thing further because of the cellular dysfunction the metabolic acidosis and the cell membrane dysfunction the there is intracellular recycles as lysosomes they are activated they because of the calcium channel opening as so as i have mentioned earlier and they release all those lactic enzymes these are right digestive enzymes which can which can digest uh, 
and anything which is present the cell fragments cell fragments or cellular structures are no exception for that and that results in the digestion of the autolysis what is called autolysis of the cell products and that results in uh, the cell damage potassium is released efflux of potassium and sodium enters into the cell and this further produces the cellular dysfunction and cell death as i have mentioned earlier the potassium outside depolarizes the membrane depolarization of the membrane produces the calcium influx further damage it goes on and on and on then these will all these lytic enzymes also release the toxic substances what are uh, toxic substances they enter into the circulation these cell degraded toxic substances include those inflammatory cytokines inflammatory mediators like serotonin histamine kinins cytokines tumor necrosis factor so on interferon gamma all those things are released <coughs> they will damage the endothelium capillary endothelium and the capillary endothelium again the permeability changes change, take place that would result in the destruction or the dysfunction and cell death so this is in brief in brief about the various mechanisms are happening but it is too complex to comprehend i will explain one by one in the coming slides look back here i have put the numbers 1 2 3 4 so these are indicating the positive feedback mechanisms which can be seen but at each time interval at each one of them they have a positive feedback so one leads to another one leads to another so this is a, a stage of a shock in which the positive feedback loops are uh, operating in contrast in in a compensated stage it is operating through the negative feedback mechanisms wherein the blood pressure is restored and so on what makes it to enter into the irreversible or refractory stage you make it 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 not ot now briefly tissue hypoxia inhibits the cellular oxidative metabolism naturally this decrease in the cellular oxidative metabolism compromises the function of the cardiac renal visceral tissues and in these visceral tissue liver plays an important part and that results in accumulation of intracellular free radicals these free radicals either oxy free radicals or nitroxy free radicals so these free radicals also there is accumulation of carbon dioxide because oxygen is not utilized there is no oxidation because of mitochondria do not have those enzymes the oxidative enzymes the carbon dioxide accumulation and uh, the carbon dioxide accumulation h ion accumulation and release of lytic enzymes that's one component the second component within the cell there is a general the mitochondrial failure mitochondrial abnormality in the mitochondrial function that generates the number of oxy and nitroxyl radicals further the lysosomes present in the cell the various cells they release even the tissues they release the inflammatory mediators and other cell injury products including the potassium and some endotoxins further because of the deficiency inflammatory mediators and the cell injury products endothelial injury take place so this endothelial injury triggers microvascular thrombosis both by intrinsic and extrinsic mechanisms by involving platelets decreased capillary density because of the cell the capillaries are broken down and increased capillary permeability so all the all the fluid enters into the interstitium now now another important aspect comes suddenly 
because of the reperfusion, because before that there is a vasoconstriction. Now, because of the vasodilatation, sudden release or sudden rush or gush of blood into the into the capillary site or tissue site, and this sudden gush of blood is also not because there is a total greater oxygen that is also injurious. This is called a reperfusion injury, and that further enhances the the apoptosic procedure and produces the also produces the necrosis of the injured cells. Now let us see what are the various systems or organs or the cells involved. One, basically there is a failure of cellular homeostasis. Number two, there is a endothelial damage and the stimulation of the blood clotting mechanism or even other hematological activity. There is alteration in the blood flow, vasodilatation, the blood accumulation, stasis that further adds to the blood clotting mechanism, suppresses the neural functions, the brain and the brainstem activity and the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous activity. This, the whatever the hypoxemia now or the H ions or potassium ions inhibit the cardiac function. Further, there will be pulmonary damage and dysfunction, hepatocellular damage, renal damage and renal failure. And lastly, it is not only the individual organs, it is the involvement of all these vital organs, what is called a multi-organ failure or a multi-system failure. This is the greatest challenge to the treating physician or treating doctor. So now, whatever you are see seeing in COVID-19, because of the ARDS it produces, there is again a multi-system failure. Similar thing happens here as a multi-system failure. Now, we examine these things one by one for our understanding. Failure of cellular homeostasis. So what happens? Impaired oxidative metabolism, there is an oxygen debt with increased venous carbon dioxide level. That is because of the decreased carbon dioxide clearance. The carbon dioxide is not cleared, it is accumulating. And also there is a anaerobic metabolism, the production of lactic acid, that is one component. Then the Diffusion of oxygen is decreased or delivery of oxygen, rather VO2 is the delivery of oxygen is decreased, point number one, and even the oxygen extraction is also decreased so that it further enhances the, the anaerobic metabolism. Ultimately, this oxygen deficiency adds to the anaerobic metabolism and lactic acid accumulation that is called hyperlactinemia. These things result in impaired ATP generation. This impaired ATP generation because the ATP is necessary for all the cellular functions, especially the vital organs like the heart, kidney, the liver, the brain, the lungs. And if there are no ATP, then they will, they will dysfunction, they will have a problem. And also, because of the decreased ATP generation, there is lack of oxygen, mitochondrial stress, increased nitric oxide, that is a nitroxyl radicals, and peroxynitrate and superoxide generation. So these are mitochondrial free radical generation. Further, the cellular homeostasis, the failure of the cellular homeostasis releases a number of inflammatory mediators from the tissues, from the cells. The tumor necrosis factor, endotoxins, the free radicals, because already I have mentioned about free radicals, they all suppress the mitochondrial function that 
that mitochondria are the vital for the metabolism that especially the metabolism in liver and um, the heart and the, the kidney the brain this is number one now second irreversible shock effect on blood vessel and blood clotting mechanism now the irreversible stage of shock because of the hypoxemia activates intrinsic and extrinsic mechanisms because of there is a damage damage to the uh, uh, endothelial cells that activates the intrinsic and extrinsic mechanism of coagulation further suppresses the these mechanisms the whatever the factors because of the damage to the endothelium results in no inhibition of the anti or uh, no activation of the anticoagulation mechanisms thus inhibits the anticoagulation mechanisms leads to the coagulation thrombus formation that is a microthrombi are formed in the capillaries and if the microthrombi are formed in the capillaries so there is no further flow of blood so that further decreases the the perfusion ox decreased oxygen and so on in addition the increases the capillary permeability the blood is going out of the capillaries from the intravascular compartment into the interstitial compartments thus there is no the blood the oxygenated blood reaching to the target sites the cells further there will be because of the 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 sodium and potassium and other inflammatory mediates mediators of the toxins there is what is called hemolysis or even sometimes what happens all the all the other toxins released they produce hemolysis thus this this decreases the oxygen transport so in brief the blood vessels and blood clotting mechanisms leads to hypoxemia mitochondrial stress free radical release so on so here i wish to highlight here it is beginning with the endothelial damage the endothelial damage sets in the coagulation mechanism formation of a thrombus the blockade of the microvessels then further damage and so on the second increases the capillary permeability because of the inflammatory mediators and so on this continues going on to the next here you see the picture in this picture you have all the increased coagulation on one side because of the tissue hypoperfusion because of the tissue hypoperfusion you have the increased coagulatory mechanism because it is it is beginning with the tissue factors and the platelet factors both are activated that increases the coagulation and here you can see the decreased anticoagulation mechanisms because the anticoagulation is not prevented so that that is again uh, try, trying to prevent this uh, so you can see that in decreased fibrinolysis uh, decreased protein c this is coming from the endothelial protein c receptors and these two results in thrombosis are the clot formation so this clot formation uh, accumulates in the blood vessels and that would produce a tissue hyperperfusion so further endothelial cell endothelial cells release number of hormones besides whatever the functions endothelins are one some of the endothelins are vasodilators these endothelins are peripheral vasodilators so they will decrease the blood pressure and also they will uh, have a hemolytic property so that means deformity so that will again further decreases it and uh, here because of the inflammatory mediators you have these inflammatory mediator par1 sip1 sip so all these protein kinases or angiopoietins they will they will open up uh, maybe you have the number of inflammatory mediators which are released that is uh, cytokines histamine kinins so on they will open up the channels and again they will uh, uh, open up the channels and uh, extravagation of the uh, blood into the into the interstitium now this all leads to tissue hyperperfusion because blood is lost somewhere else and that leads to decreased tissue oxygenation this decreased tissue oxygenation organ failure 
So now here comes the mitochondrial because the mitochondrial tissue hyperperfusion will have a mitochondrial dysfunction there on one side. If you are coming back here, the capillary leak, so that produces an edema and this edema further have a, a damaged tissue because the tissue will burst, tissue will be swollen and uh, uh, not able to take up the, this thing and that will be final organ failure. We move on further, the altered blood flow because of the all the inflammatory mediators, there is a dilatation of blood vessels because of the H ions, because of the excessive carbon dioxide. So there is a dilatation of the peripheral blood vessels that decreases the blood flow because there is no return of blood, peripheral venous return is decreased. That is one component, that means the cardiac output is decreased, that is one part. The immediately what is happening in the micro microcapillary level, there is a dilatation leads to stasis. The stasis results in accumulation of the blood cells that is sludging. And once they sludge each other, they accumulate on one side and once they accumulate, they become a barrier for the further flow that is sludging. And this, at this stage, the coagulation factors are activated and they form the microemboli. And these microemboli clog the microvessels and ultimately the vital tissues do not get the oxygen. So that is one of the things, thus decrease the tissue perfusion and the vital tissues really suffer with the, uh, hypoxemia. This is one of the factors. See what happens in nervous system? Let us see. Now the nervous system is entirely dependent upon the oxygen supply, especially those centers in the medulla which govern all the respiratory centers, the cardia, cardio, excitatory, cardio inhibitory or NTS or situated in the pontomedullary part of the brain stem. And the, even the carbon dioxide, so all those things are there in the medullary centers. So these centers governing the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system because these are component of the blood circulation and for the function of the heart. So they are all suppressed. The suppression of these things result in lack or the loss of barrel reflex activity, loss of chemo reflex activity, loss of brain ischemic reflexes. That was happening before in the compensated stage of shock. Now this whatever compensated stage of shock has done is lost. Once it is lost, it opens up the flood of various reactions that the nervous system is not able to hold it on. So that is one component that there is a depression of the medullary centers. So the second respiratory, because in the medulla, in the medulla we have those respiratory centers. Now these respiratory centers are depressed. If the respiratory centers are depressed, the respiration stops. If the respiration stops, oxygen cannot be taken up. And if the oxygen cannot be taken up, again hypoxemia. So the respiratory centers are suppressed because of the oxygen. So this goes on and on. There is no oxygen coming, depression, no respiratory activity, no oxygen coming, so on. Further, to keep us awake, the, the medullary reticular activating system is working. This reticular activating system receives all the sensory inputs going towards the cortex from the periphery from the spinal cord going towards the thalamus and then to the cortex, they all give collaterals to the reticular activating system. All the cortices are activated by the reticular activating system. That keeps the arousal response. That is why we are awake. We keep awake. And if this reticular activating system do not give this arousal response, what happens? You will not be aroused is suppressed and you will reach a stage of a coma. Coma is an unconsciousness and there are different stages of coma. We are not dealing with the coma right now. So, okay, it produces what is called loss of consciousness. 
and along with the loss of the respiratory activity and other medullary activity. That is very important for our survival. That means points number one to three are very, very important. Now comes the second, com second important structure in the brain, that is the limbic system and the hypothalamus. So this limbic system and hypothalamus are known as a visceral regulators. They regulate all the homeostatic mechanisms of the body. So now this is lost and they are inhibited because of the, the oxygen lack or hypoxemia. So now once that is lost, again hypothalamus is concerned with the temperature regulation, hypothalamus is concerned with the endocrine regulation, hypothalamus is concerned with the autonomic regulation, hypothalamus is concerned with the other all sleep and awake, sleep also and uh, many more functions. Thus it becomes very difficult and similarly limbic system is governing the hypothalamic activity. Both of these things together they are suppressed, they lead to the decreased nervous activity that further suppresses the activity. So now, because of this, the cortical functions are also inhibited. And these inhibition of the cortical cells, the, there is an alteration in the sensorium. That means he is not able to uh, sense the whatever the touch or pain or whatever the maybe it may be uh, made in the different form so that is why altered sens sensorium he is not able to respond to the normal uh, pinching or uh, painful responses so this is what happens in case of nervous system this is just a few highlights it is more than this uh, we can see uh, maybe other reflexes and other things will be depressed now what happens to heart the cardiac activity deteriorates because of the hypoxemia in the irreversible stage of the shock. Because there is a decrease in blood pressure, the decrease in blood pressure it decreases the coronary blood flow. The decrease in the coronary blood flow decreases the oxygen supply to the cardiac muscle. And decrease the oxygen supply to the cardiac muscle decreases the cardiac contractility because it is entirely dependent upon the metabolism. And this decrease in the cardiac contractility results in a decreased heart activity. Decreased heart activity decreases the stroke volume, decreases the cardiac output, further decreases the blood pressure, so on and on and on. So that is one part. So now decreased oxygen supply produces the cardiac cell damage. The cardiac cell damage decreases the cardiac contractility that further adds on. You can see this uh, uh, positive feedback loop here. You can see the positive feedback loop here. So this goes on, on and on. So everything, this even this from the tissue hypoperfusion to decrease perfusion, this thing, this is also can be put into a, a positive feedback mechanism. Thus, the entire cardiac activity decreases. The cardiac do not respond. So then the cardiac output decreases. Uh, the perfusion decreases. There is a total failure of the heart. The next, what happens? What happens to lungs? Uh, pulmonary blood vessels dilate because of the excess of carbon dioxide and because of the inflammatory mediators, also because of the uh, toxins and uh, uh, cytokines, uh, which also suppress the type 2 pneumocytes. Type 2 pneumocytes, because the lungs are, are the alveoli are lined by the two type of pneumocytes, one type 1, these are the major, major, major cells, the 90% of them are type 1 pneumocytes, type 2 pneumocytes are few, fewer and they, their functions are different, they are not for the, the, the transport of oxygen or these things, they are for synthesis of a number of factors. So they, one of the factor is surfactant. The second factor is angiotensin converting enzyme. Because in the lungs, the angiotensin one is converted to angiotensin two. So now, and they also have a phagocytic functions. They also have other functions. But the surfactant is one of those uh, chemical that is necessary for the keeping the, the alveoli dry. And if, to keep the surface tension low, 
and once the surface tension is not low so the fluid accumulates now this fluid accumulates because of two reasons one because of the dilatation of the pulmonary blood vessels number two because of the surfactant deficiency so that pulmonary edema so this if there is a water in between the alveoli and the interface the oxygen cannot be transported if that is not transported that decreases the ventilation the oxygen supply and decreases the perfusion and uh, the total oxygen lack and this continues because of the pulmonary edema oxygen lack and further it adds and adds and adds to that and that will go further so the lungs fail and it is because of number of causes you can see here the structure of the liver you can see the the hepatic arterioles uh, diverts blood into the liver constriction of the mesenteric arterioles you can see reduces the portal flow in severe shock hepatic blood flow may be reduced in such a degree that patchy necrosis you can see these necrotic these are necrotic patches patchy necrosis uh, uh, take place and the liver fails and the liver is a major metabolic organ in the uh, in the body and the entire metabolism is altered so that means that it adds to the a further problem sometimes it is said that liver generates the toxin some some toxin that will uh, make the the condition worse so that we don't know exactly what type of toxin but there are toxins released because of the hypoxemic status of the liver and damage of the liver so that means liver is also uh, going into a hepat hep there is a severe hepatotoxicity and a hepatic toxemia toxins then what happens to kidney there is a decreased renal blood flow so you know that the kidneys are very well insured for the blood blood flow because the ranges between 60 to 180 millimeters of mercury do not alter the glomerular filtration rate when the blood pressure fallen below 60 millimeters of mercury so the glomerular filtration rate is compromised so renal blood flow is decreased so that is a decrease the glomerular filtration once the glomerular filtration decreases there is what is happening you look here you look here that there is less filtration and the what happens these cells they will they will there will be a leak because of all the toxins are ischemic or toxic results they will break these epithelial cells the tubular epithelial cells these tubular damage or tubular injury is produced and these cells and uh, uh, some some of these even the glomeruli also they are damaged here the rbc's may leak in and uh, the cells are there the rbc's and cells they clog here and they they will produce the obstruction to the this thing this is a tubular injury tubular necrosis this is one and a fetent arteriolar constriction that would further trying to prevent the glomerular filtration so you have number of causes a decreased renal blood flow decreased gfr tubular necrosis tubular failure then what is called agetomia agetomia is a renal failure and this because this is not filtered here nothing is coming out here and if there is nothing is coming coming out here the urine is not formed this condition is known as a uh, an anuria and this thing in brief tissue hypoxemia inhibition of cell oxidative metabolism cardiac renal respiratory splanchnic liver etc and accumulation of intracellular carbon dioxide and the free radicals abnormal mitochondrial function resulting in free oxy radicals and nitroxyl radicals endothelial cell injury with a microvascular thrombosis decreased capillary density and increased capillary permeability reperfusion injury induction of apoptosis cellular apoptosis and necrosis of the injured cells the failure of nervous system cardiovascular system respiratory system renal system general homeostatic mechanisms finally leading to death so it cannot be the entire irreversible stage of the shock cannot be attributed to, to one system or one organ i cannot say it liver or kidney or the lungs or the this is the all these organs jointly make it very difficult to be compensated because each one is dependent upon 
need that is the final oxygen supply that leads to this death so this is a, then what we do so we we have to do something as a doctor so now these are some of the guidelines i am just trying to trying to give you first is salvage the patient trying to help him and uh, trying to make his blood pressure normal by giving a blood transfusion and try to ventilate him try to give him oxygen give his nutrition proper that is a salvage mechanism then in the second stage optimization where you provide adequate oxygen that means you ventilate him you put it on the ventilators nowadays you know the the importance of ventilators because of covid 19 so then it optimizes cardiac output see that the cardiac output is normal so that the renal function the liver function the heart coronary supply and the cerebral supply is normal and the saturation of oxygen we maintained and uh, uh, try to try to optimize lactate levels uh, try to reduce the lactate levels or lactic acid levels because lactic acid is a uh, acidemia it produces then stabilize the patient with the organ support and to minimize the complications when slowly once he comes back you remove all those things and uh, try to achieve all the organs but it is very difficult irreversible stage of the shock as i have shown in those guidance experiments that is uh, not possible i hope you may be lucky enough to make some patients survive okay so now Uh, thank you name different types of shock mention different stages of shock progressive shock is due to dash 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 you find uh, maybe right three to four these things now i am giving one to uh, five true statements give physiological explanations for each one of them so tachycardia is seen in compensated shock you give the reasons renal tubular necrosis is seen in irreversible shock give the explanation bradycardia is seen in irreversible stage of shock you explain pre radical levels are increased in irreversible stage of shock you just say it is a stage not sage so irreversible stage of shock you just work it work it on lactic acidosis is seen in a progressive stage of shock now i have questions for you to work define shock mention different stages of shock describe various physiological changes in shock changes in a person who has lost 15% of blood volume think about it and answer second question describe how one can identify the different levels of hemorrhagic shock i have given this thing you meant you bring back those notes and write physiological responses in a person with a progressive stage of shock who has lost 25% of blood volume you have to enumerate all those physiological changes now in the third question define shock give a detailed pathophysiological changes in irreversible stage of shock so it's a lot large many thing whatever i have covered today right short notes on refractory shock compensated shock the causes of hepatic necrosis the baroreceptors in baroreceptor function in shock okay maybe you can also note down coma in shock okay 